Hello and welcome to another trip into the box of generously donated books. What will we find today? Will it be a golden book? Will it be something else? Will it be Star Wars again? I think I maybe saw more Star Wars in here, but... Ooh, another movie tie-in. Wow, Gremlins. Gremlins. A new friend. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Assuming I approved the video, you've seen what we're looking at. Gremlins, a new friend. Which, despite the shape of it, is actually a golden book. Because golden books are everywhere. Wow. And they're using photos on the back and front from the movie. So the front is the cover of this book, and the back is showing another book from the series. Because you can't fit the entire Gremlins movie in this one book. Gremlins for kids. A new friend. So obviously this is going to be the part where he shows up and he's all cute. So Gremlins, a new friend by Michael Neal, illustrated by Luis Dominguez. So I'm guessing the cover is the end of the photos. Yep, except for the one on the back, but yeah. <laughs> Which is an advertisement. Mm-hmm. Wow. They did a lot for the art in this book. Yeah, two-page spread. It was a cold winter morning. Billy Peltzer was trying to start his car. As usual, it wouldn't start. Oh no, thought Billy. I'm going to be late for work again. It does look very dismayed. Quite. It's a very detailed style and not detailed. It's kind of interesting. And the chrome kind of reflections in the car are done through white streaks and heavy ink lines around that. Yeah, I almost think that the buildings were actually s sketched over, um, meaning like someone had a picture of the building and they drew over it. Tracing. There's the word I was looking for. Yes, I'm an artist. I know what I'm talking about. Well, as an artist, you tend to not trace things. You just look at reference pictures and do color sampling. Billy ran all the way to the bank where he worked. When he got there, his boss, Mr. Corbin, was waiting for him. You are late again, William, Mr. Corbin said sternly. I'm sorry, replied Billy. My car wouldn't start. I don't want excuses. I want you here on time, shouted Mr. Corbin. Yes, sir, said Billy. Yeah, it's a basic tenet of having a job to show up on time. Yeah, but the heroes and stuff like this in certain movies have to be late. That way they can be on time later. Yeah, but he wasn't out saving the world. His car wouldn't start. Also, it's too bad that you work at a bank and don't have a reliable car. Billy went to his window and began his day's work. Kate Berenger was already busy working. Billy liked Kate. Good morning, he said. That's a pretty dress. Thank you, Billy, Kate replied. He always said something nice to Kate, but he could never work up the courage to ask her to go out with him. Office romance, bad idea. Also, it's very, um, I would say it's classic comic book art, almost. Because it has that very, um, dark and thick line work, and it reminds me, especially the way Billy is drawn, reminds me a lot of the older version of Peter Parker. Hmm. A short while later, Mrs. Deagle came into the bank. She was very rich and very nasty. Nobody in town liked her. Get out of my way, Mrs. Deagle shouted rudely. She pushed past everyone online and walked right up to Billy's window. Your dog broke my imported snowman, Mrs. Deagle shouted at Billy. I'm very sorry, said Billy. I'll pay for the damage. It won't happen again, I promise. Seriously? Seriously? Billy's workday finally came to an end. He was feeling sad and lonely as he walked home. What a terrible day, he thought. Everything went wrong. Wait until later. You would think this is a quick walk in the park compared to what you have to deal with later. Of course, those are the classic famous last words. The thing is, it can always get worse. Billy's dog, Barney, came running up the walk to greet him. Hiya, boy, said Billy. I hope you had a better day than I did. Seeing Barney made Billy feel a little better. At least I have one good friend, he thought. Hi, Mom, I'm home, Billy called when he got inside. Oh, Billy, I'm glad you're here, said his mother from the kitchen. I can use your help. Mrs. Peltzer was busy making dinner. Would you crack two eggs for me, dear? She asked as Billy strolled into the kitchen. Sure, Mom, said Billy. He was always glad to help his mother. Oh, I see. Such a nice boy. Also, there's no text bubbles in this book. 
no, the all of the text is directly in the pictures or in the siding. On the first page it was less noticeable because they put it in the snow. But in the other pages... He just found a conveniently open spot and put it there. Billy reached for the Peltzer egg cracker, one of his dad's inventions. The machine cracked the eggs, but the yolks, whites, and shells all fell into the bowl together. People couldn't do that without a machine. Dad's machines. They worked so well the first couple of weeks, but then... <sighs> Here are a couple more eggs, and she just used the sink. Surprise! Billy's dad was home. Interesting. They Now that we just said that, now they have text bubbles. Yeah, only in that one section, though. And the uh, font is different. Hmm, yeah. I was just thinking maybe it was just a narration, but no, there's speech in the other text as well. There was lots of speech. Billy got yelled at several different times. Mr. Peltzer traveled a lot trying to sell his inventions, so his family was always thrilled when he returned from one of his trips. Now that Christmas was coming, they were especially happy to be together again. How was the trip? Mrs. Peltzer asked when the hugging and kissing stopped. Not bad, Mr. Peltzer replied, but never mind that now. I have a present for you, Billy. Open it. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. When he unwrapped the package, Billy couldn't believe his eyes. Sitting in a wooden case was the most unusual creature he had ever seen. Its small body was covered with fluffy fur had big, sad eyes and long, pointed ears. It seemed to be smiling, and it let out a giggle. What is it, Dad? Billy asked. It's a mogwai. I thought it would make a good pet, Mr. Peltzer replied. Hmm. That was your first mistake. Well, Gizmo makes a good pet. It's if you get him wet and then feed the other ones that then it becomes a problem. Yeah, but a good pet is something that the pet caretaker is able to take care of. Billy and the creature took an instant liking to each other. Barney, however, growled at the mogwai. Hey, Barney, said Billy. Come on, be a good boy. We can all be friends. Suddenly, the creature began to make strange sounds. What's he doing, Dad? Billy asked. He's singing, Mr. Peltzer explained. He's very talented. Smart, too. He figured out how to work most of my gizmos all by himself. Gizmo, that's a great name for him, said Billy. You like that name, boy? Gizmo smiled as if he did. Yeah. Gizmo's very smart. I mean, I think he even speaks and reads comic books in the movie, so. Movies. It's been a long time since I've seen the movies. Mrs. Peltzer could see the joy on Billy's face. She wanted to capture that feeling in a picture. Look at the camera, Billy. You too, Gizmo. Flash. Suddenly, Gizmo screamed and leaped into Mr. Peltzer's arms. I'm sorry, said Mr. Peltzer. I forgot to tell you, this little fellow hates bright lights. Morning number one. Yep. Bright lights, water, don't feed after midnight. I'm trying to remember what else there was. I don't think we'll get to it in this volume. After a few moments, Gizmo relaxed and returned to Billy's arms. Gee, Dad, said Billy. He's terrific. The best present you ever brought me. Thanks. Merry Christmas, Billy, Mr. Peltzer replied. Billy took Gizmo up to his room. Barney followed them. Yeah. Not going to end so well. Maybe not in this book, but... <laughs> he can sing, thought Billy. I wonder if I can teach him to speak. He can sing. So can birds. I'm Billy. Billy. Can you say that? The text bubbles with gibberish. Billy, come on, try it. Another text bubble of gibberish. One more time now. Billy. And then finally, Billy. All right, way to go, Giz. Gizmo began to sing again, and Billy decided to play along. When Billy made a mistake, the remarkable creature reached out and pressed the right note. Amazing, Billy thought, as he tossed Gizmo a piece of chocolate to reward his cleverness. Ah! Ass. Barney howled with jealousy. Billy, feeling sorry for his dog, tossed him some chocolate too. <coughs> no, no, no. Why did so many books used to have us feeding chocolate to dogs? Vanicula had it too. Just no. And since they don't say how he's playing along, he has a little electric keyboard on his table. I don't remember if that was in the movie, but it probably was. 
Even if it didn't make the final cut, it was probably in the script. Well, look at that, said Billy. Gizmo was petting Barney, and Barney was enjoying it. See, Barney, he likes you. I knew you guys could be friends. Gizmo jumped onto Billy's head. Hey, you're in a playful mood, he said, laughing. In fact, you've put me in a silly mood, too. Wait here, Billy said, as he went over to his dresser. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the squirt gun's coming out. <laughs> nope. Billy pulled a small Santa Claus cap out of his drawer and put it on Gizmo's head. He placed a mirror in front of his pet. To Billy's surprise, Gizmo shrieked with shock when he saw himself in the mirror. The little creature was so startled that he lost his balance and toppled right off the desk. Gizmo! Thud. See, very comic book. They have sound effects. Hmm. Gizmo hit the floor hard. He was scared, confused, and hurt. He began to cry. Come on, Giz. We'll fix you right up. He looks very shocked in the mirror, but it doesn't quite look like a mirrored pose. Might be just the angle. I'm thinking it's just the angle. I wonder if it was the mirror or the hat. Because, you know, he's scared of the reflection in the mirror because he's experienced what happens later in the movie before. Billy carried Gizmo into the bathroom. After gently wiping the tears from his pet's eyes, Billy carefully bandaged his head. There now, Billy said when he was finished. Good as new. Billy thought that Gizmo had enough excitement for one day, so he tucked him safely in bed. Barney was glad to see that the Mogwai was all right. He showed Gizmo how he felt by giving him a big, wet kiss. Gizmo giggled with delight, and Billy was pleased. Wouldn't that technically be getting him wet? Yeah, but does it specifically have to be water? I don't remember. I just remember, like, don't get them wet is one of the rules. That's definitely wet because it's saliva, but what are the components of dog saliva? Billy was so pleased, in fact, that even his troubles at work didn't seem so bad anymore. I'll get to work on time tomorrow, he resolved, and I think I'll ask Kate to go to the movies. He pulled the covers up around him. Good night, Barney. Good night, Gizmo, he whispered happily. He had a new pet, which was, of course, very exciting. But more than that, Billy Peltzer had a new friend. Okay, that was an interesting way to take the beginning of that movie. Well, it said a new friend, so I'm like, we're not going to get to any of the bad stuff. Will we ever get to the bad stuff? Because, you know, this is a kill kids' children book series. Recall some of our other children's stories yeah yeah the real question is will we ever get there because this is from the box mm. there may or may not be any other gremlin related books in the box because i'm still being good and not really looking did you actually see both of the movies that doesn't mean i remember them yeah, i was just curious if you had because I've seen both, and I remember liking the second one more than the first one, probably because the first one's more of a kind of a Christmas horror movie, which, which is surprisingly traditional, because in Europe, they used to tell ghost stories at Christmas. This is why in a song, I can't remember which one, um, the person actually says, we'll tell ghost stories around the fire and some other stuff. Ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmas is long, long ago, because that was actually traditional. Back when kids weren't appreciated and cherished, they were just something you had. <laughs> well, what did we think of this? A tiny little snippet. I remember books like this, where they would just parcel out pieces of the movie. Though a lot of times they had actual photos from the movie, not illustration. At least it's not as bad as some of the stuff I've seen nowadays, where let's take a kid's animated show, take still frames from it, and take the text from that show and put it as a book. And then you can take that book and read along with the episode, because it's pretty much the same. Which is actually a decent learning tool. Hmm. Yeah, it is one of the ways you could help learn language. By having the text and the visuals and the audio all together. But that wasn't the point. The point was to make a cheap book that people would buy. Yep. So, this has been Gremlins, A New Friend by Michael Neal, illustrated by Louis Dominguez. Yep, right there on the cover. A Golden Book, New York. It's always fun to find ones that don't look like the traditional ones, because you're so used to that distinctive pattern. To wonder why they did 
other ones, beyond the fact that they're more expensive, this was $1.50. Well, I'm sure there were licensing costs. Uh Uh-huh. Thanks again for listening. Um, No other books about gremlins, but we do have other books for licensed characters and lots of other books, period. Ton of playlists for Ember's Rating Room and a ton of playlists on the main channel if you're tired of books. Can you get tired of books? Is that a thing? I know you can get tired when reading books. Yes, because it is a little bit of eye strain and processing power for the story. So yeah, lots of other things. If you'd like a copy of this book, we'll try to get you a link if it's still in print or you can find it used. Also, if you just feel like going shopping, you know, the Ebates link, because I can. And since the book link will probably be from Amazon, Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. And probably never will be. (laughs) Thanks again.